Hello dear friends, this is your personal English coach Divyam here and today I'm here with the fiction unit number 5 Patul Babu film star written by Satyajit Ray. This chapter shows how you can do the smallest thing with the best possible way with a lot of dedication. So let's begin. Patul Babu had just hung his shopping bag on his shoulder when Nishikanto Babu called from outside the main door. Patul, are you in? Oh yes, said Patul Babu. Just a minute. Nishikanto Ghosh lived three houses away from Patul Babu in Nepal Bhattacharji Lane. He was a genial person. Patul Babu came out with the bag. What brings you here so early in the morning? Listen, what time will you be back? In an hour or so. Why? I hope you'll stay in after that. Today being Tagore's birthday. I met my youngest brother-in-law in Netaji Pharmacy yesterday. He's in the film business, in the production department. He said he was looking for an actor for a scene in a film they're now shooting. The way he described the character, 50-ish, short, bald-headed, it reminded me of you. So I gave him your address and asked him to get in touch with you directly. I hope you won't turn him away. They'll pay you, of course. So Nishikanto, who was Patul Babu's neighbor, he came to Patul Babu's house and he described what happened, what brought him here so early that morning. Nishikanto said that his brother-in-law was making films. He needed an actor. And the demand of the film and the demand of the scene uh, was such that they needed a guy who was nearly 50 years old, who was short-heighted and bald-headed. And the appearance of the character, uh, the appearance of the uh, demanded character exactly matched Patol Babu. And so Nishikanto Babu was here to let him know and to um, tell him that his youngest brother-in-law will be here, will be there in Patol Babu's house to talk about the role, to talk about the scene, to talk about what is needed in his film because he was in the production house. And he also tells Patol Babu that please don't say no. Don't turn, turn him away means don't say no. Patol Babu hadn't expected such news at the start of the day. That an offer to act in a film could come to a 52-year-old non-entity like him was beyond his wildest dream. So Patol Babu never thought that someone could offer him a role in acting and someone could offer him a role in, uh, in, in, in one of the scenes of a movie. So he was taken aback, he was surprised and he was amazed. So he constantly had a lot of thoughts. Well, yes and no. Asked Nishikanto Babu. I believe you did some acting on the stage at one time. So, here we see that Nishikanto Babu is aware of Patol Babu's past. Patol Babu used to act while he was young. So, Nishikanto remembers that. And when he heard about the character, when he heard about the script, and when he heard about the demand of the movie from the production house, which was apparently told to him by his youngest brother in law then he only thought of Patol Babu. That's true, said Patol Babu. I really don't see why I should say no. But let's talk to your brother-in-law first and find out some details. What's his name? Naresh. Naresh Dutt. He's about 30. A strapping young fellow. He said he would be here around 10.30. So now we see that the youngest brother-in-law's name is Naresh Dutt. And because Nishikanto had given Naresh the address of Patol Babu's house, he was going to be here at 10.30 tonight. So that's why Nishikanto had also asked Patol Babu to get back early. Buying provisions in the market, Patol Babu mixed up his wife's orders and brought red chilies instead of onion seeds. And he quite forgot about the aubergines. This was not surprising. At one time, Patul Babu had a real passion for the stage. In fact, it verged on obsession. In Jatras, in amateur theatricals, in plays put up by the club in his neighborhood, Patul Babu was always in demand. His name had appeared in handbills on countless occasions. Once it appeared in bold type near the Sitar Kantore Patul Babu in the role of Parasar. Indeed, there was a time when people bought tickets especially to see him. Now just imagine a situation where 
for example you played music right now you're playing music right now and maybe after 20 to 25 years when you've almost forgotten about music when you're totally into your uh, daily life course in Iran somebody comes up to you and says that you have to play maybe a guitar on the stage so what would happen to you you will go back in time you will think about the past you will think about how you played guitar while you were young and you would be lost in thoughts and you would also be nervous and anxious as to what would happen on the stage what would be the show all about so the same thing is happening with Patol Babu when he was offered a role he thought about the past so this stanza tells us that Patol Babu was such a fantastic actor when he was young that his acting almost became his passion. So there's one thing in your life that you always cannot do without or you always need uh, to do that to feel good. So acting seemed to be something like that for Patol Babu. And people in his town or city or village used to come especially to see him because he was a fantastic actor. That was when he used to live in Kanchanapura. He had a job in the railway factory there. In 1934, he was offered higher pay in clerical post with Hudson and Kimberley in Calcutta and was also lucky to find a flat in Nepal Bhattacharjee Lane. He gave up his factory job and came to Calcutta with his wife. It was quite smooth sailing for some years and Patul Babu was in his boss's good books. So let's understand this stanza. So when he lived in Kancharapara, I hope I pronounced it right, uh, he used to act fiercely. Acting was his passion. But while he was acting, he also had a job in the railway factory. And soon he was given more money and a good post, a clerical post in Hudson and Kimberley Company in Calcutta. And because he had money and stuff and because everything was going so good, he bought a flat in Nepal Bhattacharjee Lane. And then he left his job, uh, came to Calcutta and was very smooth. It was all good and uh, the meaning of this line was in bosses good books means he was loved by all his bosses so his bosses praised him so everything went well for him in 1943 when he was just toying with the idea of starting a club in the neighborhood sudden retrenchment in his office due to the war cost him nine year old job so let's understand this statement in 1943 when he was just toying with the idea means what happens is you try different things in life to gain money or to help people so similarly Patul Babu while he was um, married uh, he wanted to try something new in life to see if he is happy doing that so he tried a couple of things in his life he tried he, he also tried to open a club in the neighborhood for the people and what happened is retrenchment in his office due to the war so in his office they fired many people because there was war there was war going to happen so he had to leave his nine year old job the job in which he worked for nine long years ever since then Patul Babu had struggled to make a living at first he opened a variety store which he had to wind up after five years then he had a job in Bengali form which he gave up in disgust when his boss began to treat him in too high-handed fashion. Then, for 10 long years, starting as an insurance salesman, Patul Babu tried every means of earning livelihood without ever succeeding in improving his lot. Off late, he has been playing regular visit to a small establishment dealing in scrap iron where a cousin of his has promised him a job. So, now we know that Patul Babu had to leave his nine-year-old job because of the war now there's nothing left for Patol Babu so he's trying out different things in life he opened a variety store then he had a job in a Bengali farm and he had to leave that job because his boss treated him badly and for 10 long years he was an insurance salesman so we see here that Patol Babu is not satisfied with any of his jobs Patol Babu do not like to work in any other jobs 
after he was fired from his previous job. And right now, while Nishikanto uh, was standing at the door, Patol Babu was probably leaving for this small establishment uh, which dealt with scrap iron. And uh, Patol Babu's cousin worked there and he, he had told Patol Babu that, okay, I'll give you a job, don't worry. And acting, that has become a thing of the remote past. Means it is a far, 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 far away talk where um, people used to enjoy Patol Babu's acts or scenes. Something which he recalls at times with a sigh. So something which he recalls with a lot of sadness. Having a good memory, Patul Babu still remembers lines from uh, some of his better parts. Listen, oh listen to the thunderous twang of mighty bow, Gandiva. Engaged in gory conflict and to angry roar of the mountainous club, whizzing through the air in the hands of great Brigodar. It sent a shiver down his spine just to think of such lines. So, friends, there are situations in life or there are events or moments in life uh, which when you think about them you feel absolutely good you lost uh, you lose the control of the present and you go back to the time when you did that so same thing is happening with Patul Babu when he's offered this role and uh, thing of a remote past means it's been a long 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 time that Patul Babu has ever acted but he was so fierce he had such a passion for acting that he still remembers all the dialogues that his play asked him to enact on the stage. So that's what was going on in Patul Babu's mind when he was offered a role by Nishikanto's brother-in-law. Naresh Dutt turned up at half past 12. Patul Babu had given up hopes and was about to go for his bath when there was a knock on the front door. Come in, come in, sir. Patul Babu almost dragged the young man in and pushed the broken armchair towards him. Do sit down. No thanks. I... Oh yes, I must say. I was quite taken aback after so many years. I hope you have no objection. You think I'll be alright for the part? Patul Babu asked with a great diffidence. So here, it's already 10.30 uh, and uh, Naresh Dal turned up at half past 12. So here, um, it, it's a morning scene. I, I think I said night in the previous line when it said 10.30 because it was not mentioned whether it was a.m. or p.m. So because nobody comes up at 12 to meet someone at midnight, so we assume that this is a morning scene. And that's why Nishikanto had asked Patul Babu to be back by 10.30. And uh, Naresh Dutt, who is from the production house, he turns up at half past 12. So you see, these uh, producers and directors and filmmakers, they usually are so occupied that they're always late everywhere. So he turns up at half past 12 and Patul Babu is absolutely very excited to see him. And he gives the utmost respect and makes him sit. And uh, Patul Babu tells him that I was so shocked when I heard about this role. So Naresh Dutt says, do you have any problem with that? And uh, Patul Babu tries to reconfirm if he was okay. And he, he has a great um, uh, anxiety or nervousness. So he said, uh, do you think I'll be okay for the play? Are you very sure that I will be acting? Narish Dutt cast an appraising look at Patul Babu and gave a nod. Oh yes, he said. There's no doubt about that. By the way, the shooting takes place tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, Sunday. Yes. And not in the studio. I'll tell you where you have to go. You know Faraday House near the crossing of Bentick Street and Mission Row? It's a seven-story office building. The shooting takes place outside the office in front of the entrance. We will expect you right at the 80, right at 8.30 sharp. You'll be through by midday. So Naresh, you know, tells Patul Babu that the shooting is going to take place tomorrow itself on Sunday. So Patul Babu cannot believe. And uh, Naresh said it's not at the studio. So usually these films, they, they have a set created in the studio and the actors come to the studio. They give the scene and go away. But this was not at the studio. This was a place called um, uh, uh, Faraday House. So this was a seven story office building. And he said uh, the shooting will take, take place outside at the entrance 
and uh, you have to be there at 8 30 a.m sharp and everything will be done by midday so you can expect that you'll be free by 4 p.m that's what uh, Narish told Patul Babu. Narish doesn't prepare to leave, but you haven't told me about the part, said Patul Babu anxiously. So, obviously, if somebody asks you to act in a movie or a play or a skit that happens in your school, you will inquire about the lines that you have to say, you will inquire about the character that you have to say or play. So, Patul Babu does the same thing. He says, at least tell me which lines I have to say. Oh, yes, sorry. The part is that of a pedestrian, an absent-minded, short-tempered pedestrian. By the way, do you have a jacket which buttons up to the neck? I think I do. You mean old-fashioned kind? Yes, that's what you'll wear. What color is it? Sort of uh, nut brown, but woolen. That's okay. The story is supposed to take place in winter, so that would be just right. Tomorrow at 8.30 sharp, Fairy House. So, Naresh tells Patol Babu to wear a jacket, a specific jacket that is demand of the scene. So Patol Babu confirms that he has a jacket of uh, nut brown color and woolen and Naresh said that will be okay and do come tomorrow morning at 8.30 at Faraday House Sharp. Patol Babu suddenly thought of a crucial question. I hope the part calls for some dialogue. Certainly it's a speaking part. You have acted before haven't you? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Fine, I wouldn't have come to you just for walk-on part. For that, we pick people from the streets. Of course, there's dialogue. And you'll be given your lines as soon as you show up tomorrow. So, this is a really uncomfortable situation for Patrol Babu because Naresh is telling him that you'll be given the lines tomorrow when the shooting takes place. And uh, here we can assume that the role should be very nominal because uh, Naresh comes to Patul Babu's house and he does not even tell him what the character was all about. He, he almost forgets about it. He, all, he does not even tell the lines. So we can we can um, assume that the, the character to be given to Patul Babu is not very uh, prominent. And then line number 36 uh, when Patul Babu, you know, he asks him um, about the dialogue he says that you know we don't just pick people from the streets we know people's background and that's why I've come here to you to invite you after Naresh just left Patul Babu broke the news to his wife so he told his wife about the role that he just got as far as I can see the part isn't a big one I'll be paid of course but that's not the main thing the thing is remember how I started on stage remember my first part I played a dead soldier all I had to do was lie still on the stage with my arms and legs spread and remember how I rose from that position remember Mr. Watt shaking me by hand and the silver medal which the chairman of our municipality gave me remember this is the only first step on the ladder my dear better half yes the first step that would god willing mark the rise to fame and fortune of your beloved husband so Patul Babu is somehow trying to convince his wife about the new job that he got so he said this is just my uh, nominal role and after this role is done I'm gonna get to fame name riches and we're gonna have a lot of money because you remember I acted in the past that's what he tells his wife and uh, to this dialogue to this stanza uh, to this lines that Patul Babu tells his wife his wife replies counting your chickens again before they're hatched are you no wonder you could never make a go of it so his wife was aware about Patul Babu's deeds. Patul Babu had switched a lot of jobs. So this time also his wife doesn't have so much confidence in Patul Babu's words. Even when Patul Babu tries his best to convince her. But it's the real thing this time. Go and make a cup of, cup of tea, will you? And remind me to take some ginger juice tonight. It's very good for the throat. So Patul Babu assures her that it's not some kind of a joke. It's gonna happen tomorrow and then he asked her to get a cup of tea and to take some ginger juice and uh, because he had to speak the dialogue he said it's very good for the throat so please give me ginger juice tonight the clock in metropolitan building showed seven minutes past eight when Patul Babu reads Esplanade it took him another ten minutes to walk to Faraday house 
There was a big crowd outside the building, three or four cars stood on the road. There was also a bus which carried equipment on its roof. On the edge of the pavement there was an instrument on three legs around which there was a group of people busy. Near the entrance also on three legs, a pole which had a long arm extending from its top at the end of which was suspended what looks like a small oblong beehive. Surrounding these instruments was a crowd of people among whom Patul Babu noticed some non-Bengalis. What were what they were supposed to do, he couldn't tell. So you know how movie uh, shooting takes place. There is a set created and uh, let me tell you that for one particular scene there might be 200 to 300 people involved so somebody might be setting up the color some people might be setting up the sound some people might be checking if the set is okay if there are extra thing needed to give justice to the scene so just describe what was there and what Patul Babu saw when he reached the venue of his role but where was Naresh Dutt? he was only one who knew him with a slight tremor in his heart Patul Babu advanced to the entrance it was the middle of the summer, the warm jacket buttoned up to his neck felt very heavy. Patul Babu could feel beads of perspiration forming around the high collar. So the scene demanded a jacket. Maybe they are shooting as if it was winter. But Patul Babu was very specific. He got this jacket, he walked all the way to the venue and now he was feeling hot. This way Atul Babu. Atul Babu? Patul Babu spotted Naresh that standing at the entrance and gesturing towards him. He had got his name wrong. No wonder since they had only had a brief meeting. Patul Babu walked up his palm together in a namaskar and said, I suppose you haven't yet noticed down my name, Sita Kanto Re. Although people know me better by my nickname Patol. I used it on the stage too. So Patul Babu corrected Naresh that my name is not Atul Babu, it is Patul Babu and my real name is Sitar Kanto Re. Patul Babu is my stage name. Good, good. I must say you are quite punctual. Patul Babu rose to his full height. So someone praises you, you you, raised, uh, you, you just blow your chest and you feel proud, right? So that's how Patul Babu felt when he was praised. I was with Hudson and Kimberly for nine years and I wasn't late for a single day. Is that so? Well, I suggest you go and wait in the shade there. We have a few things to attend before we get going. So Nourish tells him that you can wait over there and when your scene comes, we will call you. Nourish, somebody standing by three-legged instrument called out. Sir? Yes, sir. He is uh, that shot where they bump into each other. Okay, now clear the entrance, will you? We're about to start. So Nourish was trying to introduce Patol Babu to his supervisor. But his supervisor seemed to be very occupied and he says, Go and clear the entrance. We are, we are about to start the scene. Patul Babu withdrew and stood in the shade of Pan Chop. He had never watched a film shooting before. How hard these people work. A youngster of 20 or so was carrying the three-legged instrument on his shoulder. Must weigh at least 60 pounds. So Patul Babu was there at the Pan Chop and observing whatever was going on. Uh, the, the events that were unfolding. He saw that youngsters worked very hard. The youngster was lifting a 60 pound tripod. But what about his dialogues? There wasn't much time left and he still didn't know what he was supposed to say or do. Patul Babu suddenly felt a little nervous. Should he ask somebody? There was Naresh Dutt there. Should he go and remind him? It didn't matter if the part was small, but if he had to make the most of it, he had to learn his line beforehand. How small he would feel if he muffed in the presence of so many people. The last time he acted on stage was 20 years ago. So, as you already know, Naresh never gave him a script. So Patul Babu is little nervous and anxious as to what will happen. And also, once the lines are given, Patul Babu has to practice. And only practice can make him look confident in between the crowd that was there, that was watching the scene. Patul Babu was about to step forward when he was pulled up by short, uh, pull up short by a voice shouting, Silence! This was followed by Naresh Dutt loudly, announcing with hands cupped over his mouth. We are about to start shooting. Everybody, please stop talking. Don't move from your positions and don't crowd around the camera, please. Once again, the voice was heard shouting, Silence! Taking! Now, Patul Babu could see the owner of the voice. He was a stout man of medium height and he stood by the camera. Around his neck hung something which looked like a small telescope. Was he the director? How strange, he hadn't even bothered to find out the name of the director. So Patul Babu was going to act in a film. 
which he did not even know about. He did not know the director's name, but he assumed that man to be a director whom he just saw with a lot of apparatus on his sides and on his body parts. Now a series of shouts followed in quick succession. Start sound, running, camera, rolling, action. Patul Babu noticed that as soon as the word action was said, a car came up from the crossing and pulled up in front of the office entrance. Then a young man in grey suit and pink makeup shot out of the black of the back of the car, took a few hurried steps toward the entrance and stopped abruptly. The next moment Patul Babu heard the shout, cut, and immediately the hubbub from the car crowd resumed. So we can imagine the scene of the movie. There's this rich man who is you know speeding up to this particular building and he jumps out from the back of the car he's sitting on the back side of the car and his driver is supposedly uh, sitting in his front so uh, we can we can assume that there's something happened in the building because of which this rich man had to jump out like that and there is a uh, something that he possessed so uh, the first part of the scene was just the man rushing to faraday house building and jumping out at the back from the back of the car and that's where the uh, the producer and directors might have shouted cut so then the crowd start talking about whatever happened the man standing next to patrol babu now returned to him i hope you recognize the young fellow he asked why no said patrol babu chanchal kumar said the man he's coming up fast playing the lead in four films at the moment patrol babu saw very few films but he seemed to have heard the name Chanchal Kumar. It was probably the same boy Koti Babu was praising the other day. Nice makeup the fellow had on. If he had been wearing a Bengali dhoti in Punjabi instead of a suit and given a peacock to ride, he would make a perfect god Kartik Montosh of Kanchrapara, who was better known by his nickname Chinu, had the same kind of looks. He was very good at playing female parts recalled Patul Babu. So Patul Babu is standing there at the pawn shop and seeing whatever unfolds and uh, then he heard um, uh, the fellow uh, asking him if he knew that guy who just came out of the car who just bars out of the car. So Patul Babu said no I don't know him. He said he's Chanchal Kumar a very famous actor. So then Patul Babu you know broadened his imagination and he said if, if, you, if, he, if he wore a Bengali dhoti and Punjabi instead of this uh, suit that he's been given he would look like God Karthik and uh, Montosh also called Chinu he had the same looks so he was trying to recall all these things while he was standing there Patul Babu now turned to his neighbor and asked in a whisper who's the director the man it's not me it's actually the man raised his eyebrows and said why don't you know he's Baron Mulek he had three smash hits in a row well at least he had gathered some useful information it wouldn't have done for him to say he didn't know if his wife had asked him in whose film had he acted and with which actor. So just imagine Patrul Babu going to his house and telling his wife that he didn't even knew the director. So that would have been looked uh, that would have looked bad. So now here he is. He at least has some information about the director and it's Baron Mulek. Narish Dutt now came up to him with tea in a small clay cup. Here you are, sir. The hot tea will help your throat. Your turn will come shortly. Patul Babu now had to come out with it. If you let me have my lines now, your lines come with me. Naresh Dutt went to the three-legged instrument with Patul Babu at his heels. I say, Sosanko, a young fellow in short-sleeved shirt, turned towards Naresh Dutt. This gentleman wants his line. Why don't you write them down on a piece of paper and give it to him? He's the one who I know. I know. So Sanko now turn to Patal Babu. Come along, Grandpa. I say, Jyoti, can I borrow your pen for a second? Grandpa wants his lines written down. The youngster Jyoti produced a red dot pen from his pocket and gave it to Sosanko. Sosanko tore off a page from the notebook he was carrying, scribbled something in it, and handed it to Patal Babu. So here we see that the lines are not very dominant <coughs> or important because uh, the um, the staff who is uh, not the who's not really the producer or director 
um, who, who are not really uh, bigger people in the movie you know they are just scribbling down something on a paper and giving it to Parul Babu so here we can say that the lines might not be uh, very important so the role also might be very small Parul Babu glanced at the paper and found that a single word had been scrawled on it oh Patol Babu felt a sudden throbbing in his head. He wished he could take off his jacket. The heat was unbearable. Now imagine a world-class actor getting one worded line in some random movie. He already uh, had a lot of suffering because of the heat and because of the jacket. Now here he was getting his line, so-called line, which is just one expression, not even a word. It is an expression. So Sangu said, what's the matter, Grandpa? You don't seem too pleased. Were these people pulling his leg? Was the whole thing a gigantic hoax? A meek, harmless man like me, and they had to drag him into the middle of the city to make laughing stock out of him? How could anyone be so cruel? So for example, think about a situation where you are working in a multinational company dealing with a lot of people here and there, dealing with phone calls in a suit and tie. People are praising you all around, and you go to some other place, and you're called upon for a task, and what you get is just maybe uh, telecalling or a very small task. Will you be um, feeling insulted? Uh, will you feeling will you be um, feeling small? Yes, you would. So similar was the situation of Patol Babu. He felt bad. He felt as if people were mocking him, and he thought, "How can people be so cruel? I've been a, I've been a greatest actor in the past, and right now." one single expression and for this expression i had to come down all the way from my home in this heat it's impossible patul babu said in hardly audible voice i find it rather strange why grandpa just oh is that all i have to say shosanko's eyebrows shot up what are you saying grandpa you think that's nothing why this is a regular speaking part a speaking part in baron mulek film do you realize what that means why, you're the luckiest of actors. Do you know that till now, more than 100 persons have appeared in this film who had nothing to say? They just walked past the camera. Some didn't even walk. They just stood up in one spot. There were others whose faces didn't register at all. Even today, look at all those people standing by the lamppost. They all appear in today's scene, but have nothing to say. Even our hero, Chanchal Kumar, has no lines to speak today. You're the only one who has. See? So Sosanko was telling the fact. Sosanko was telling... Uh, Patrol Babu uh, that don't feel bad we're not mocking you and uh, he also told Patrol Babu that don't think of this role or a word as a small thing because he says a lot of people have turned up some people didn't even speak anything there were some situations where people were just standing there were some people who never even um, who were not even visible from the camera so that's a big thing so you're the only one who has to say oh even the hero Chanchal Kumar has nothing to say at all. Now the young man called Jyoti came up, put his hand on Patol Babu's shoulder and said, Listen, Grandpa, I'll tell you what you have to do. Chanchal Kumar is a rising young executive. He is informed that an embezzlement had taken place in his office and has come to find out what has happened. He gets out of his car and charges across the pavement towards the entrance. Just then he collides with an absent-minded pedestrian. That's you. You're hurt in the head and say, Oh, but Chanchal Kumar pays no attention to you and goes into the office. The fact that he ignores you reflects his extreme preoccupation. See? Just think how crucial the shot is. So, uh, Jyoti. He is, Jyoti is a guy here and he is trying to tell Patal Babu about the scene. He is trying to explain him the scene. So it's the hero uh, here called Chanchal Kumar and uh, there's a lot of stuff in his mind. He is uh, deep into his thoughts, of which thoughts his office in the Faraday house was, uh, was uh, there was a stair, there was a theft that happened in his office. And so Chanchal Kumar was barging out in a, from his car and running right into his room or right into where the uh, cash is or properties are and that's why he could not realize whom he dashed with so he's dashing with Patol Babu and while he's dashing Patol Babu uh, speaks this expression oh and uh, to this Chandra Kumar pays no heed he just 
uh, chases to his room in the office. So that's where Patol Babu has to act. I hope everything is clear now, said Sosanko. If you just move out from where you are where standing, the fewer people crowd around here, the better. There's one more shot left before your turn comes. So Patul Babu had to wait before his shot came. Patul Babu went slowly back to the pawn shop. Standing in the shade, he glanced down at the paper in his hand, cast a quick look around to see if anyone was watching, crumpled the paper into a ball and threw it into the roadside drain. Oh, a sigh came out of the depths of his heart. Just one word? No, not even a word. A sound. Oh. The heat was stifling. The jacket seemed to weigh a ton. Patul Babu couldn't keep standing in one spot anymore. His legs felt heavy. So Patul Babu was feeling discouraged because never in his life had he got such a small expression to show on stage in front of so many people. So he was feeling bad about it constantly. And now the jacket, uh, his legs, everything seemed like you know it is a burden to him. He moved up to the office beyond the pawn shop and sat down on the steps. It was nearly half past nine on Sunday morning. Songs in praise of the goddess Kali were sung in Garali Babu's house. Patol Babu went there every week and enjoyed it. What if he, went, if he, were, he were to go there? What harm would there be? Why waste a Sunday morning in the company of these useless people and to be made look foolish on top of that? So now he was feeling embarrassed. And uh, he thought of what he did the last Sunday and the Sundays in the past. He said uh, there were songs being sung at his, at his friend's house and, um, you know, I should have been there. I'm here with this useless dialogue, useless expression. And these, these people are also stupid to giving me these useless dialogues. Silence. Stuff and nonsense. To hell with your silence. They had to put up with this pompous show for something so trivial. Things were much better on the stage. So now he's going back to the past where people praised him while he was on the stage. And here he was with a single line and nothing much to say. A single expression and nothing much to say. The stage. The stage. A faint memory was stirred up in Patul Babu's mind. Some priceless words of advice given in deep, mellow voice. Remember one thing, Patul. However small a part you are offered, never consider it beneath your dignity to accept it. As an artist, your aim should be to make the most out of your opportunity and squeeze the last drop of meaning out of your lines. A play involves the work of many and it is the combined effort of many that makes the success of the play. So while he was frustrating in, in a corner, uh, there was something that came up to his mind. Somebody told him something at one point in time that, that just surfaced. And it was the fact that no matter how small your, your role is, do not consider it to be small because in a movie you know it is a group work it is a teamwork that makes a movie a successful one so everybody has to act their parts even if it's a small role you have to do it so these words came to patrol babu's mind it was mr Pak pakrashi who gave the advice gogon pakrashi patrol babu's mentor a wonderful actor without a tract of vanity in him a saintly person and an actor in a million. So, in all the movies, it's the combined effort, it's a group effort of the people that makes it a successful one. So, his advice came to Patol Babu's mind while he was frustrated. There was something else which Mr. Pakrashi used to say. Each word spoken in the play is like a fruit in the tree. Not everyone in the audience has access to it, but you, the actor, must know how to pluck it, get its essence and serve it up to the audience for that edification. So, just so the audience can feel your role, you need to be very careful about the details. So, you need to be careful and responsible about your scene or your act on the stage or on the, on the movie theater. The memory of his guru made Patul Babu bow his head in obscience. So, what it really, was it really true that there was nothing in the part he had been given today? He had only one word to say, oh, but was that word so devoid of meaning that it had to be dismissed summarily? So now he is trying to think about what his guru said and trying to reflect on it. A single expression, oh. So uh, that expression, he thought, was it so small and was it so useless that I am frustrating over here? So now in the next time that he's practicing that word, oh, 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 oh. Patul Babu began giving the explanation. Uh, 
different inflection each time he uttered it. So now Patil Babu is motivated, feeling motivated uh, because he recalled the advice of his guru and he, a sudden paradigm shift happens in his mind and he starts practicing the expression. The same exclamation, the same exclamation when spoken in different ways carry to different shades of meaning. A man when heard says, oh, in a quite different way. Despair brought forth another kind of, oh, sorrow provoked yet another kind. In fact, there were so many kinds of oh's, the short oh, the long oh, oh, shouted and oh, whispered. The high pitched oh, and the low pitched oh, and the oh, starting low and ending high, and on the oh, starting high and ending low. Strange. Patal Babu suddenly felt that he could write the whole thesis on one monosyllabic exclam exclamation. Why had he felt so disheartened when this single word contained gold mine of meaning? The true actor could make a mark with one single syllable. So now he is trying to define the real meaning of an actor. A true actor will give justice to anything that's given to him. That's what he's thinking. Silence, the director said. Raise, uh, the director had raised his voice again. Patal Babu could see a young Jyoti clearing the crowd. There was something he had to ask him. He went quickly over to him. How long will it be before my turn comes, brother? Why are you so impatient, Grandpa? You have to learn to be patient in this line of business. It will be another half an hour before your call. So, Patal Babu was called sharp at 8.30 and now time is ticking and he still hadn't, had not got his turn. So, he was pretty impatient. That's alright, I'll certainly wait. I'll be on the side of the street across the road. Okay, so long as you don't sneak off. So, Jyoti says, so long as you don't run away. I'm fine with that. You be anywhere you want. Just be there. Start sound. Patal Babu crossed the road on a tiptoe and went into the quiet little side street. It was good that he had a little time on his hands. While these people didn't seem to believe in his rehearsal, he himself would rehearse his own bit. There was no one about. There were office buildings, so very few people lived here. So, who, those who did such as shopkeepers, had all gone to watch a shooting. So, we see that Patal Babu went into a silent place to rehearse his part. Patal Babu cleared his throat and started enunciating the syllable in various ways. Along with that, he worked out how he would react physically when the collision took place, how his features would be twisted in pain, how he would fling his arms out, how his body would crouch to express pain and surprise. All these he performed in various ways in front of a large glass window. So now we see that Patal Babu has made himself comfortable in a very silent place where he can practice and he is trying to think about all the ways in which he can give justice to the word O. Patal Babu was caught in exactly half an hour. Now he had completely got over his apathy. All he felt now was keen anticipation and suppressed excitement. It was feeling he used to feel 20 years ago, just before he had stopped on the stage. So now he was self-motivated because of his guru's dialogue that he recalled, and he had a lot and a big paradigm shift in his mind from frustration to being motivated. And now he was anticipating or expecting um, a lot of um, uh, courage. He was expecting a lot of uh, adventure on from his part, and. Uh, uh, he was feeling exactly the same that he used to feel 20 years ago, right before when he uh, was about to act on stage. The director Baron Muri called Patal Babu to him. I hope you know what you're supposed to do, he asked. Yes, sir. Very good. I'll first say start sound. The recorders will reply by saying running. That will be your cue to start walking from that pillar. And for the hero to come out of the car and make a dash for the office, you work out your steps so that the collision take place at this spot here the hero ignores you and strides into the office while you register pain by saying oh stop for a couple of seconds then resume walking okay Patul Babu suggested a rehearsal but Baron Mulek shook his head impatiently there's a large patch of clouds appearing the, approaching the sun he said the scene must be shot in sunlight one question please yes an idea had occurred to Patul Babu while rehearsing and he now came out with it uh, I was thinking if I had a newspaper open in my hand if, if, and if the collision take place while I had my eyes on the paper then perhaps Baron Mulek cut him short by addressing the bystander who was carrying a Bengal newspaper. Do you mind handing your, new, handing your paper to this gentleman just before, um, just for the shot? Thanks. Now you take a position beside the pillar. 
Gentle, are you ready? So here we see that um, the director Baron Mulek is trying to uh, quicken the process of shooting and he's trying to um, obey to his demand instantly because the character should be comfortable, the actor should be comfortable with what he wants. So Patul Babu said rather than dashing Chanchal Kumar just like that because my eyes will be open if I just walk to him and dash that would not make sense. I should uh, pretend as if my attention is somewhere else and I could not see Chanchal Babu and therefore I dashed. So Baron Mulek instantly obeyed his idea. Yes sir. Good. Silence. Baron Mulek raised his hand and then brought it down again saying just a minute Kesto I think if we give the pedestrian a moustache it would be more interesting. What kind, sir? Walrus, Ronald Coleman, or a butterfly? I have them already. Butterfly, butterfly. And make it snappy. The elderly makeup man went up to Parul Babu, took out a small grey moustache from the box and stuck it up with spirit gum below Parul Babu's nose. Parul Babu said, I hope it won't come off at the time of collision. The makeup man smiled. Collision, he said. Even if you had to wrestle with Dara Singh, the moustache would stay in place. Parul Babu had quick glanced the mirror, which the man was holding. True enough, the moustache suited him very well. Patul Babu inwardly commended the director's perspicacity. Perspicacity is ability to understand. So we see this uh, director like Sanjay Leela, Bhansali and uh, uh, great directors uh, who know exactly how the scene will look good. Even Amir Khan, they know how the audience will enjoy. So instantly Ban Mulek looking at Patul Babu said, let's give him a moustache, he'll look good in that. Silence! Silence! The business with moustache had provoked a wave of comment from the spectators, which Baron Mulex shouted, which Baron Mulex shout now silence. Patul Babu noticed that most of his bystander eyes were turned towards him. So after he was given a moustache, everybody was looking at him. Start sound! Patul Babu cleared this throat. One, two, three, four, five. Five step would take him to the spot where the collision was to take place. And Chanchal Kumar would have to walk four steps. So if both were started together, Patul Babu would have to walk a little faster than the hero. Or else, running. Patul Babu held the newspaper open in his hand. When he had to do, when saying, oh, was maximum 60% of irritation, 40% of surprise. So friends, here we see that Patul Babu has all the calculations ready in his mind. He knows how many steps he has to take. He knows how much uh, he has to put irritation and how much he has to be surprised. So what will make the scene look perfect? So he is obsessed with the details. He's paying excessive attention to details, which is the quality of a true actor. Action, clock, 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 wham. Patol Babu saw stars before his eyes. The hero's head had banged against his forehead an excruciating pain had robbed him of his senses for a few seconds. So friends, here we know that Patul Babu uh, has to dash with Chanchal Kumar. But the calculation was so accurate that Patul Babu dashed with him as if it was a real dash. He dashed with him very hard. But the next moment, by supreme effort of will, Patul Babu pulled himself together. And mixing 50 parts of anguish with 25 of surprise and 25 of irritation cried oh after a brief pause resume his walk cut was that right asked Patul Babu anxiously stepping towards Ban Mule jolly good why you're quite an actor which means you are a wonderful actor it was fantastic so Sanko just take a look at the sky through the dark glass will you Jyoti now came out to Patul Babu and said I hope grandpa wasn't hurt too badly my God, said Chanchal Kumar, massaging his head. You timed it so well that I nearly passed out. So friends, here we see that it was because of Patol Babu that the scene was shot so perfectly. Patol Babu knew how many steps he had to take. Patol Babu knew how he had to express O. Oh. Patol Babu also knew that he had to have a newspaper if the scene was to look good and fantastic. Even Baron Mulek is praising him. So here we know that Patul Babu had a deep passion for acting and he was trying to justify the same when he was given of even when he was given a very small expression of O. Oh. Nourish that elbowed his way to the crowd, came up to Patul Babu and said, please go back where you were standing. I'll come to you in a short while and do the necessary. 
so do the necessary means i'll pay you 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 go to the pawn shop or wherever you are standing and uh, i'll pay you for your uh, acting and then you can go home patul babu took his place once again by the pawn shop the cloud had just covered the sun brought down the temperature nevertheless patul babu took off his woolen jacket and then heaved a sigh of relief a feeling of total satisfaction swept over him so friends when you do when you undertake a task and when you uh, uh, plan it and when it goes as expected as anticipated don't you feel amazed don't you feel surprised and more importantly do you feel contented and satisfied the same feeling happened to uh, occur uh, to patol babu he had done his job really well all the years of struggle hadn't blunted his sensibility ogon prakarchi would have been pleased with his performance but all the labor and imagination he had put into one shot with these people able to appreciate that he doubted that he doubted it so he was really skeptical about the fact that all the crowd the people they were standing near the set did they really appreciate it he doubted they just got hold of some people got them to go through certain motion and paid them for the labors and forgot about it paid them yes but how much 10 50 20 rupees is it true that he needed money very badly but what was that 20 rupees when the measured when measured against the intense satisfaction of a small job done with perfect dedication and um perfection so patul babu is thinking about his happiness about his satisfaction he said money is not important for me i know people um uh, might say a lot of things the crowd might say a lot of things but what matters to me is the satisfaction that i got from the act what matters to me is i chased my passion i did my best so even if i'm not getting paid even if the people even if the crowd uh, standing here do not like my de- my deed or my act it's okay because 20 rupees when measured against the intense satisfaction the intense contentment the intense happiness of a little task done with a lot of motivation dedication calculation and planning you know that was way more against the amount 10 minutes or so Narish Dutt uh, went looking for Patul Babu near the pawn shop and found that he was not there. That's odd. That that man hadn't been paid yet. What a strange fellow! So Patul Babu left the scene without even taking the money. So that surprises Narish Dutt. Why did he leave uh, without getting paid? Because of the above stanza, he felt that money is nothing. We earn money for happiness. and i am sure you agree so friends when patul babu already got this happiness already he was contented already he was amazed and he was happy then why would he need an amount of 20 rupees it's nothing for him the sun has come up baron milik was heard shouting silence silence narish hurry up and get this people out of the way so many students had asked me what the last line means so last line just shows the life as usual it just shows that even after patol babu left things were back to normal so life again resumed uh, after patol babu's deed or act and the deed or act uh, explained us how little task can be done with lot of perfection and chase your passions there your contentment lies there your satisfaction lies everybody is made special everybody has something or the other to offer to the world just make sure that you follow it and listen to your heart so this is all about the chapter patol babu pretty interesting chapter with a lot of twist and turns uh, very simply written i'm sure when i read the chapter you understand half of it but i wanted to explain it to you better uh, a lot of students also ask me to record the sessions in hindi but i say a clear no to that because if you understand in hindi you will think in hindi if you want to master english thinking in english is important if you don't think in english you won't be able to speak in english so do not practice anything or try to translate anything in hindi and uh, try to jot it down uh, in english always think in english all right friends so here is your personal coach signing off if you have any questions concern do mention it in the comment section Uh, do reach me out my email address is already written in the cover page of my channel i have lot of videos recorded you can check it out in my uh, video list and you can subscribe 
even better if you subscribe then you'll get updates of my channel and uh, I'm going to cover the uh, literature part first and then we'll deep dive into the grammar so thanks for watching and have a fantastic day ahead